All right, calculus students, we're going to talk about some test prep questions today. Remember, you are supposed to try these on your own first. If you haven't tried them on your own, you are a cheater. Go try them first. All right, this first one, we've got an equation of a line tangent to the graph of f. That's what we're looking for. So remember, when you're trying to get an equation of a line, that always helps me to remember I need y minus y1 equals the slope times x minus x1. It's really incredible how often this comes up. So you just got to get this ingrained in your mind. And that where m, this right here, that's your derivative. So when we have all of these different points up here, we're looking for f prime to be here with our m. So as you go across here, these are all set up in point slope form. So we have a slope of 2, a slope of 1, a slope of 5, a slope of 3, and a slope of 5. So 1, 2, 3, 5, which is pretty much all of these. Um, it, let's see, the derivative here is 5, the derivative here is 3. So if the derivative of an x value equaling 2 is 5. Over here, the derivative of an x value equals 3. These are our two possibilities of slope. So we either have 5 as a slope or 3 as a slope. And that's our only options. So that means it could be either d, because it's a slope of 3, or it could be, what was the other one? Slope of 5, or it could be c. OK, so those are our two options. So the next thing then is to figure out, well, what about uh, the x value here is a 1. The y value is a 2. OK, so then you should have to match it up. Here I've got uh, the x value of a 1. Yeah, both of these have an x value of 1. So the x value of a 1 has a slope of 3. x value of a 1 here has a y value of 2. So there you go. Number 2 is a very challenging problem. OK, this would be like an extreme level 5 type of a question on an AP exam. If you understand this one, you are rocking. OK, so most of you probably would have gotten this wrong. Let me just show you how this sets up. It's good to see them anyway. So g of x, what we're trying to figure out is what is the original function g? That's pretty tough to know from just this. So let's go back up here and just kind of read. We've got two situations going on. We know that f is negative because it's less than 0. So the function's always negative. And we know that g of 5 equals 2. All right, that doesn't help me. So what else have I got going on here? h of x is equal to f over g. And they tell me what h prime equals. But immediately, you should be thinking, wait a minute. h prime doesn't equal this. h prime equals the quotient rule. So let's just set that up real quick. h prime, h prime is going to equal, I'm going to leave off the of x part just for simplification of writing this out. So h prime is going to be, that was horrible. There, that's a little better. h prime equals derivative of the first, so f prime, second one left alone, g minus, and now I leave f alone and do g prime, all over g squared. That is the quotient rule. So what they're telling me, though, is that this is supposed to equal this. So if this is h prime, it's also supposed to equal f prime of g. So is there any way we can manipulate this thing a little bit and try and simplify things up? Well, uh, one thing I could do is, let me get rid of uh, this part of it. So we've got a little equation. There's a couple ways to do this. You want to manipulate this thing as much as possible to try to solve this out. So if I multiply both sides by g squared times by g squared, then these will cancel. And I'm going to be left with s, excuse me, f prime of g minus f of g prime equals. And now this cancels with one of those. And I'm left with f prime of g. Well, look at this. This is really close here. If I subtract the f prime of g from both sides, they cancel. And all I'm left with, those cancel, those cancel, is a negative f of g prime equals 0. Now, you can get ignore the negative. Just divide both sides by negative 1. So this is what I have. That means, OK, again, this, this is pretty complicated stuff. f has to equal 0. Or g prime, whoops. There, that's better. Or g prime has to equal 0. One of these two things has to be true. Look at statement number 1. f of x has to be less than 0. It can't equal 0. So that one's not it. 
this can't be true so that means g prime equals zero okay so now you have to do some thinking i'm not going to give the whole thing away hopefully this narrows it down a little bit if g prime equals zero you now have to think through the process of what could g possibly equal if the derivative is zero that means the slope is zero everywhere so what does g have to equal Okay, you have some options here, and you have one more statement here that you have to use, and that will hopefully help you out. Okay, number three, it's asking at what point on this graph, somewhere on this graph, is there a tangent line that is parallel? Okay, it's parallel. Remember, this means that they have the same slope. So the two things have the same slope of this line. So how do you compare slopes? Well, let's solve for y on this one. You solve for y, and you're going to get y equals negative 1 half x. And then there's a constant over here, minus 5 eighths. But it doesn't even matter what the constant is, because all I really cared about was what's the slope of this line, 1 half. They, if they have the same slope, the line of this is slope. What do you get? How do you get slope of a parabola? How do you do that? You take its derivative. Remember, derivative is slope. So this is what you're going to do. You're going to take the derivative of this thing. So whatever y prime is over here, it has to, whatever that is, has to equal 1 half. Set those equal to each other, solve it, and that's going to help you figure out what the x value is. Once you have the x value, you should be able to know at what point on this graph is the coordinate point. Okay, number four. This is another one kids have a lot of problems with. You're going to see these things throughout the whole year, so this is really good to get this down, understand it. We have two things going on. We have that this function is continuous and it's differentiable. We're going to give these to you a bunch, so pay attention to this. If they're both continuous and differentiable, that means that this piece, ax to the fourth plus 5x, has to equal the other piece of bx squared minus 3x. They must equal each other when x equals 2, when the two pieces come together. So they're right here at x equals 2, when they, when they come together, boom, they equal each other. So just plug in a 2. Now, that's not enough, though, because you can see here I've got an A. You're going to have an A here, and you're going to have a B here, and you have too many variables. You won't be able to solve that. So what we do is we then also take that it's differentiable, meaning its derivatives must equal each other. So the derivative of the first piece is 4AX cubed plus 5, and that has to equal the derivative of the second piece, 2BX minus 3. And when do they equal each other? When x is a 2. So if x equals 2, these two pieces are differentiable. The der derivatives must equal. Now you'll end up with two equations with a's and b's, and you should be able to solve it from there. OK, last one. We want to find a function that's continuous but not differentiable. If it's not differentiable, that means, but it is continuous, it means it's either got a, uh, a vertical tangent line like this, or it's got some type of corner or cusp like that. Okay, so we're looking for a sharp edge or for a vertical tangent. Now we are allowed to use a calculator on this, so that helps. Um, you could just graph them and see which ones have this on it. Let me show you how you do absolute value in a calculator real quick, in case you don't know. All right, so I've got this calculator pulled up. I always forget, I think it's like math and one of these options over here, you move over number or something like that. But I'll be honest, I always forget that, so I just do this. I do second, and down here in blue, you see where it says catalog? I just do the catalog, because the catalog gives you everything in alphabetical order, and the very first one is absolute value. Okay, so that's how you bring up the absolute value. So if you graph the th all three of these on the calculator, that will, let me get rid of this, that will let you see what the graphs look like, and you should be able to tell if it has a vertical uh, tangent or if it has a corner or cusp. Another way, though, is if you can do the derivative, at least of this first one, the derivative of this is 1 third x to the negative 2 thirds, which is equal to 1 over 3 x raised to the 2 thirds. Well, if you plug in a 0 there, that doesn't exist. The derivative does not exist on this at all, so it's not differentiable. So since this is not differentiable, that means this is a possibility of having one of the answers, right? Because we're saying which of the following functions are continuous but not differentiable. This is exactly what we want. It's continuous but not differentiable. Now what about this one? Absolute value of x, remember the graph of that? That's just a sharp v. Corner, oh, ho. there you go. We didn't even really need the calculator for this. And then number three, this is probably where you're going to need the calculator. You've got to figure out 
what does this thing look like? Uh, does it have a sharp corner? Is it nice and smooth the whole time? If, it, if it's got a sharp corner, then your answer is E. If it doesn't, then what's your other possible answer? Just one and two. So it's, it's either one of those, depending on what the graph looks like. All right, that's it. Good luck on that mastery check.